We, we always like waiting for Channel 6. Don't tell them that. They're going to they'll be insulted. Don't say that. <laughs> well, I guess you need ratings. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for being here, and good afternoon. And I'd like to particularly thank Councilman Squilla, who we'll hear from in a minute, along with the Reverend Greg Holston of Power. Um, there are no other council members here. So when people hear the word poverty, they often think of unemployment. But the sad fact is that in this nation, gainfully employed families still struggle with poverty. We know full well that one quarter of Philadelphia's residents live at or below the poverty line, the highest rate of the nation's 10 largest cities. Poverty doesn't just show up one day knocking on a family's door. Poverty works its way into households in insidious and subtle ways. Like when, a parent, when parents must choose between buying new shoes for their growing toddler or a decent meal for their family. They, they are the working poor and it shouldn't be that way. With that in mind, our administration will transmit to City Council tomorrow legislation to help address this. It raises the Philadelphia 21st century minimum wage for workers and employees of city contractors to $15 an hour. The hourly rate, which is just currently over $12 an hour, would increase gradually each year over four years until it reaches $15 an hour on July 1st, 2022. This legislation demonstrates the commitment our administration has to finding solutions to lifting residents out of poverty. This is a commitment that I believe all employers should also make. And the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania next needs to step up. I applaud Governor Wolf for raising wages for state employees and contractors. But I think now it's time for the General Assembly to take the steps necessary to raise the minimum wage for all workers of the Commonwealth as well. As far as this proposal, I look forward to City Council's consideration. I know that Councilman Squill and many of his colleagues have for years led the way in fighting for fair and just wages. And I'm confident that they will continue to do so here. This bill is another important step amongst many we must, we must make, uh, but it's, it's, as I said, it's an extremely important step. Um, this is good for the overall economy, too. Um, people who are making low wages spend their money. They don't have uh, the money, extra money for all kinds of brokerage accounts and things of that nature. We, we want people to get to that point where they can save over a long period of time. But this money will be spent in, in supermarkets and, and along neighborhood business corridors and uh, will raise the level not only of a people's quality of life, but also the dignity that they feel about themselves and the job that they do. Uh, I know when we were, we were working down at the airport, we heard stories of people who are you know, making seven, eight dollars an hour after working for a company for, for 15, 16 years. Uh, are people who are pushing people in wheelchairs uh, and, their, and the, the company they work for tried to count their tips as their, as their hourly wages. Um, these are things that really need to have, are, are stopping and need to stop, uh, and we need to give people the opportunity to do better for themselves and their families. So I'd like to ask Councilman Squilla to come up. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for your leadership on this legislation. And uh, I also want to thank Reverend Holston, the power, and the whole power team for really being a part of uh, the focus on driving this legislation. Uh, it's important to realize, you know, Councilman Good, when he first introduced the 21st century wage um, and was a big advocate for uh, raising the, the wages of our working folks, um, People looked at that as a, like you're stepping on toes and you're, and you're trying to force people to do something. But in this case, we're trying as a city to lead by example. And I think it's important to remember that if we show people we in the city here are doing it, it's a lot easier to go out and ask other people to do the same thing. And so that's what's important for us to lead by example, to show that $15 an hour is something that is not just the ending point, but a starting point. And then, um, Folks that are, are, as the mayor said, that work for low wages are the ones that struggle through our city, but they're the, they're the lifeline of our city. And um, they're the ones that make things happen in our communities. And we need to make sure that we support them. And this legislation will get us there in four years uh, with the advocacy of the, of the administration and the mayor. I'd also like to thank the Deputy Mayor of Labor, Rich Laser, who is a big advocate, and thanked him for his negotiations with us. And 
understanding that this is something that we as a city should be proud of. Um, you know, other cities have, have moved in this direction, and we know that our, our working people are our backbone. And so we support you. We're supporting this legislation. My colleagues uh, will have the opportunity to uh, help support this tomorrow as we introduce this legislation. And uh, we do want to move the needle of poverty forward. And um, to be able to then change the life of those people who are struggling in our city. And um, also, when you, when you heard that the mayor said about how that also spurs the economy is that the folks now have additional dollars to not only to be able to pay for their housing needs or maybe to pay medicines that they need for their children, but also may be able one day to go out and get something to eat and, and spend those resources in our, in our local establishments. So again, thank you for giving me uh, this opportunity to work with you on this great legislation. Thank um, uh, Councilwoman, uh, Councilman Good, who initially started the 21st Century Ways. Thank you to the Mayor and Reverend Holston for your leadership on this and looking forward to um, ushering this through council, through legislation, and hopefully signed by the mayor uh, before the end of the year. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'd like to announce Reverend Holston now from Power to give a few words. Thank you. I'd like to bring up also uh, the co-chairs of our economic dignity team, Terry Burgeon, Kate Esposito, Paula Paul. If you would just come, bring, your, bring the signs with you. Bring the signs with you. For without the work of this incredible team at Power, uh, this led piece of legislation, which Power has been advocating for for really about four years now, since we at first moved the 21st century living wage up to uh, 10.88 then, and then eventually $12, we knew immediately we had to come back and try to move it to 15. $15 an hour moves from 12 to 15, it says $3, but it actually moves people out of poverty. $12 keeps people in poverty, 15 actually moves them out. And so in a city that has 26% poverty rate, a city that has 14% of its citizens living in deep poverty, a city that therefore almost has 400,000 people living in poverty and almost 200,000 living in deep poverty, if we can move by this piece of legislation, literally tens of thousands of city contracted and subcontracted workers out of poverty, then we are taking a valid and positive step forward to move us into a city where people are no longer living in poverty. And I want to applaud the mayor and, and, and Councilman Squilla and everyone who has supported this effort. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. And I know the mayor would, would agree with me, if uh, he would agree with me that if he could move all of us, uh, all of this city, all of this state to $15, he would do it. And, it. and this really is a chance for all of us to begin to advocate because this city is now saying it wants to lead by example. It, wants, it has done everything legally it can do to raise wages in this city. And because of what happened over 10 years ago where the state preempted the city's ability to be able to do more, this is the maximum that the mayor and council can do on their own. Now we need to change the law at the state level. And I'm glad to hear that the mayor is thinking in the same direction and city council is thinking in the same direction. Now we need to change the law so that municipalities like Philadelphia can raise the wage, not just for tens of thousands contracted and subcontracted workers, but can raise the wage for every citizen in this city so that the 400,000 people, many of them working every day, could have a, a living wage for the 40 hours they work. That's our goal, that's power goal, that's the goal, I believe, of our mayor, and let us work together and build together so we make that day happen here in the city of Philadelphia and the state of Pennsylvania. And so I, I, I thank you all for this the, the, the opportunity to be able to share and be a, to talk about this positive piece of legislation. We can raise the minimum wage across the state if we build together to do it, and I believe we will do that in the next coming year with everyone's help. So thank you all again. Thank you all again for this very positive step. 
Lead by example, lead by example, lead by example, lead by example, lead by example. And, and now that's what our mayor and our city council are doing. Thank you so much. Any questions? It's between 16 to $20 million over five years. Uh, we know for sure it's 2,000 city workers, primarily temporary and seasonal workers, and we don't have a handle yet on the number of employees of subcontractors that, are, that do work for the city, but we're gathering that. And I also want to take the opportunity to thank Rich Laser, Deputy Mayor of Labor, for all his hard work in this, because he helped negotiate all of this um, and uh, has uh, the working person in, in his heart all the time. Um, the airport is well aware of it. There's two, they have two years to, um, to, to do what they need to do. They were very instrumental in the end in helping um, our labor efforts there by getting the subcontractors to, uh, to, to come aboard. Uh, without them, uh, we would not have made any progress with the subcontractors because they were dug in pretty good. Uh, and American basically said, we are, we, are a union, we are a union prevailing wage type of company. Uh, all of our employees are unionized. They make good wages and good benefits, uh, and we want to see the same thing with our subcontracted workers. So they are aware of it. They've been aware of it through the course of negotiations. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Thanks.